Let's go next to Sam from Minnesota. Sam from Minnesota, you're on the air. Oh, hi. How's my volume? Your volume's beautiful. Okay. Um, do you really think Beto O'Rourke is a good gubernatorial candidate for Democrats in Texas? You know, he had a statewide race in 2018 and lost to Ted Cruz of all people. And that was before he told Texans, hell yeah, I'm coming for your guns. So I don't really have another candidate in mind, but yeah. with so many people in Texas, do you really think Beto's the best Texas Democrats have to offer? I don't know. I, we talked about this a little bit earlier in the week when, when on the bonus show, the topic of Beto running. I think what Beto has going for him are a couple different things. Number one, name recognition to some degree. Now, name recognition can be bad, as you point out, if he's known to Texas Republicans as the guy who wants to take your guns. So name recognition can be a double edged sword. Um, I think Beto also has going for him that he can definitely rebut Greg Abbott's failed policy very well and directly and eloquently and articulately. But I don't know if he's the best person to, to, to run against Abbott, but I'm with you in that I can't really think of anybody else. So I'm excited about the idea that because Abbott's approval is in the toilet, maybe someone with name recognition like Beto could actually sweep in and, and do a good job. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier in the week, they're going to run against him on, hey, these Democrats want to take your guns. Forget about the covid disaster. Forget about the electricity disaster. Beto's going to take your guns. I think that could be a problem, but I don't have any better ideas right now. Uh, that's fair. The other day you were talking about how you felt the interviews with families of anti-vax people who died of covid felt really exploitative. Sometimes um, they do. Sometimes they do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've thought a term I've thought of a term for that kind of thing, and I want to know what you think of it. Yeah. Uh, vaxploitation. Vaxploitation. Yeah. I mean, the thing about it is that could mean exploiting people who did get it or who didn't. I mean, it's not super precise, but I, it's not a bad idea. I kind of like it. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's just a play on the old black exploitation films. What about uh, anti vax exploitation? Uh, maybe. OK, it's getting a little long. At that it's a little point, too long. I yeah, it works. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, do you, so do you agree that sometimes those interviews feel a little exploitative and like disaster porny? Yeah, I mean, it's just the nature of, you know, these new shows that are looking for content. Yeah, fair, fair. All right. Uh, I appreciate the call. Oh, sure, sure. I was about to ask you if you think we'll be back to normal by mid 22. <laughs> but uh, I think we'll be back to normal by, by mid 32. <laughs> okay. No, I have no idea. I don't know. I hope so. But who knows? I think COVID's going right. to be around a couple of years at least. Sure. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the call. Appreciate that. Let's um let's speak to some other people because there there's really a lot of people here who want to get on. Let's go next to Alicia from Cancun, Mexico. You're on the air. Hello. Alicia, Alicia from Cancun, you're on. If you unmute, we'll be able to hear you. And last opportunity for Alicia slash Alicia from Cancun. You must unmute to speak to me. Otherwise, the tubes won't work. All right, that's too bad. Let's stay in Cancun and go to Eric from Cancun instead. Eric, are you on the air? Hmm. Eric from Cancun, you're on. Wow. Something must be going on with the Internet there in uh, in Cancun. Let's go next to I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Is it Ishan from Amherst? Yeah, that's correct. Hey, David, how's it going? It's going well. Thank you. Thanks for picking up my phone call. Um, so my question to you is on Sunday, the parliamentarian Elizabeth McDonough ruled that the Democrats can't include all the immigration provisions in the reconciliation bill. Now, the um, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Dick Durbin, they're all being like, oh, we have plan B. We're going to go back to her with another proposal. My question to you is, why are they begging an unelected official? Why can't they simply overrule her or ignore her? Um, I know that in 2001, Republicans did the same thing. They sure. probably fired the parliamentarian when millions of lives are at stake. Um, 
do you have any do you know like why are they just like not playing hardball and like just like ignoring her altogether Ishan just, like, I agree with you completely this notion that now is sort of like just assumed to be true that the parliamentarian just gets to decide uh I I I challenge that and I've read a couple of good pieces arguing that you don't re it, it's sort of like by tradition that the parliamentarian is given um, uh, the ability to weigh in on these things and that times have sort of changed and that, quite frankly, I mean, I, this term has a negative connotation, but they could just steamroll the parliamentarian if they wanted and then deal with it later. Let Republicans say I'm against it because it's out of order, right, or whatever. But I completely agree with you and I think it's ridiculous the way they're handling the parliamentarian. But do you think there's any chance with Joe Manchin and Christian Sinema in the House, uh, in the Senate that um, they're going to even like think about um, bringing the bill with the provisions on the floor and let Kamala Harris just ignore her ruling? Um, I, I don't I think it depends on the bill, to be perfectly honest. I'm not sure. I think it depends. I think there may be. Yes, I'd have to think a little more about that. Hey, thank you so much, David. Thank you so much for taking my phone call. Um, I don't know if you remember, but like I called last year too, and we talked. But yeah, probably not. But thank Re you so remind much. me, Ishan, are you in Amherst, Massachusetts, or Amherst, New York? Amherst, Massachusetts. I go to UMass. Oh, you um, do. Yeah. Oh my God, I just heard three hundred and fifty positive cases last week at UMass. Yeah, there was like a party in an off-campus gathering, townhouses. Yeah. Um, honestly speaking. If I'm going to level with you, I've stopped caring because I okay. feel like there's nothing I can do. People are going to party left and right. Yeah, uh, I, I can't help it. So like there's no point like thinking about it. Just like it just is not conducive to my own well-being. I, I cannot focus on other stuff. I, I to totally sympathize with that. Yeah. I don't which which townhouses was the party at? Um, the townhouses, which is like in Sunderland. Oh, those townhouses. Um, oh, wow. OK, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there yeah. was like a mass congregation. And I feel like there's nothing I can do that was, that's going to change to drive the numbers one way or the other. Yeah. So what's the point of stressing out about it? I'm fully vaccinated. I take care of myself. I just like I'm just moving on. I just like live my own life. Whatever happens, happens. I, I, I can't do anything at this point. I'm I understand, hopeless. Ishan. I, it sounds like you're doing all the right things anyway, so. Yeah. Good. Thank you so much, David. All right. Pleasure. It. There's Ishan from UMass, my undergraduate alma mater. Wow. What a call. What a call.